Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopijana Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopijana Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana, Vajajana Ranjana Jasodanandana, Vajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopijana Vallabha Girivana Dari Kopijana Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana Vajrana Ranjana Jasodanandana Vajrana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamunantira Vanachari Jamunantira Vanachari Jaya Vishnapad Parnamahangsa Pari Jakachari Asatya Sadashishimad his divine grace to the A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Anati Kota Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Numacharya Srila Harita Stakor Ki Jai, Iskand Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Prem Sikahoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Dvaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhaktivedanta Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gogopiyan Swamakun Radhakun Giri Govaran Ki Jai, Shiva Navanam Ki Jai, Shri Mai Paravdam Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Tulsa Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Sonavira Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Go Premanandi, All Glorious Summer Devotees, All Glorious Summer Devotees, All Glorious Summer Devotees, All Glorious, All Glorious Shishi Guru and Shri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this morning we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 9, Text Number 7. Atta yavis yasid vijasati svagharba jatam mithunam sapatnya upan yasya svayam anusangustaya patilokam agat. <laughs> Just a short one. Translation. Thereafter, the Brahmana's younger wife. No, right. Atta. Thereafter. Yavi Yasi, the youngest. Dvijasati, wife of the Brahmana. Svakarva Jatam, born of her womb. Mitunam, the twins. Sapatnyaya, unto the co wife. Upanyasya, entrusting. Swayam, personally. Anusangustaya, by following her husband. Patilokam, the planet named Patiloka. Agat, went to. Translation. Thereafter, the Brahmana's younger wife, after entrusting her twin children, the boy and girl, to the elder wife, departed for Patiloka, voluntarily dying with her husband. And you thought book distribution was difficult. <laughs> Imagine walking into a fire. <laughs> of course, book distribution is a little bit like that, walking into a fire, a little purification. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue on here. This is text uh, 8. After the father died, the nine stepbrothers of Jadbart, who considered Jadbart dull and brainless, abandoned the father's attempt to give Jadbart a complete education. The stepbrothers of Jadbara were learned in the three Vedas, the Rig Veda, the Sama Veda, and the Yajur Veda, which very much encouraged fruitive activity. The nine brothers were not at all spiritually enlightened in devotional service to the Lord. Consequently, they could not understand the highly exalted position of Jad Bharat. Text 9 and 10. Degraded men are actually no better than animals. The only difference is that animals have four legs and such men have only two. These two legged, analytic men used to call Jud Bharat mad, dull, deaf, and dumb. They mistreated him, and Jud Bharat behaved for them like a madman who was deaf, blind, or dull. He did not protest or try to convince them that he was not so. If others wanted him to do something, he acted according to their desires. Whatever food he could acquire by begging, by wages, and whatever came of its own accord, be it a small quantity, palatable, stale, or tasteless, he would accept and eat. He never ate anything for sense gratification because he was already liberated from the bodily conception, which induces one to accept palatable or unpalatable food. He was full in the transcendental consciousness of devotional service, and therefore he was unaffected by the dualities arising from the bodily conception. Actually, his body was as strong as a bull's, and his limbs were very muscular. He didn't care for winter or summer, wind or rain, and he never covered his body at any time. He lay on the ground and never smeared oil on his body or took a bath, because his body was dirty his spiritual effulgence and knowledge were covered, just as the splendor of a valuable gem is covered by dirt. He only wore a dirty loincloth and his sacred thread, which was blackish. Understanding that he was born in a Brahmana family, people would call him a Brahmabandhu and other names. 
being thus insulted and neglected by materialistic people, he wandered here and there. Purport Srila Narottam Das Thakur has sung Deha Smriti Nahiyar Samsara Bandhana Kahantar. One who has no desire to maintain the body or who is not anxious to keep the body in order and who is satisfied in any condition must be either mad or liberated. Actually, Bharat Maharaj, in his birth as Jed Bharat, was completely liberated from material dualities. He was a Paramahamsa and therefore did not care for bodily comfort. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chaksumilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Mukhan Kotaba Chalang Pangan Lang Hayate Grim Yat Kripa Tadaham Bande Shigurum Dinatadanam Vanchakapa Tribhyascha Kripa Sindhu Jevacha Paditanam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavavyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In this verse, it says that Jid Bharat, he was covered by dirt. He never cleaned himself. And it said that it was he was covered like a like a valuable gem is covered by dirt. And many devotees in this movement were also very dirty. But by the potency and by the purity of Srila Prabhupada, they were uncovered. The dirt was removed and they became like Gems. Hmm. Beautiful. So many devotees in this movement are uh, so nice, so exalted. Uh, but they were dirty, like many of us. But by the potency of Srila Prabhupada and by the mercy of Krishna, so many uh, people have become, you know, yeah. Just wonderful devotees. So that's the uh, mission of this society, is to go out and give people Srila Prabhupada's mercy, Krishna's mercy, so they can also become uncovered. Everyone deep down, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, everyone is this pure servant of Krishna, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sajikavanoi, Shravanari, Sudhichite, Kori. And this purity could come out by this hearing, by hearing and chanting. So we're giving people an opportunity to hear about Krishna by this transcendental book distribution. And people are appreciating. I just got some news this morning, the good morning news here in Iskon. David is going to like to hear this. <laughs> that, uh, what was his name? Maha, I always forget his name. Mahotsava. Mahotsaha. Mahotsaha. <laughs> Mahotsaha. Actually, he did more than 1,100 books. He did 1,177 books in 10 hours collected ten thousand dollars <laughs> one day <laughs> it's just like this is the inconceivable mercy of krishna i mean you could imagine he i mean he just he must be a, a type of person so enlivened and so so energetic and nice and you just can't say no to him. You just, you just, people just can't say no to him. I mean, you just, I just, it's just absolutely inconceivable. This is the world record, and I, I think it's going to be hard to beat that record. <laughs> uh -huh. 
if anybody beats that record, it'll be him. <laughs> so, yeah, this is because he has some very sincere desire to give Krishna to others, to help others also become uncovered from this uh, material nature. So, yeah, we have to, here it's mentioned that that he uh, depended on Krishna, this uh, Jed Bharat. He was completely dependent on Krishna. He didn't care for winter or summer, didn't cover himself, and would accept whatever would come. In the Krishna, or in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, in Krishna he says, Chaita says, Sarva Karmani, uh, that one who depends on me and accepts me as, as their only protection. Such a devotee is, 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 very, is very dear to me. So we have to depend on Krishna. Just like on book distribution, we, we depend on Krishna. We try our best. We try our best to please Krishna and depend on Him. It's like sometimes I'll, I'll distribute a book to someone, I'll, I'll say the line, and then try to say a little bit more, try to convince them to take a book. But then at one point you just have to like stand back and like, like subtly just stand back and let Krishna do his magic. You know, sometimes you talk too much and it, it kind of goes on and on and then you lose the focus. You know? <laughs> but it's, you just have to you know, make the presentation and just kind of let Krishna do his magic. And he does a lot of magic. I mean what Mahutsaha is doing, I mean that's like, that's, that's mystical. I mean that's just like totally mystical. He's just like he's just like floating around. He's not he's not on the ground there. He doesn't land. He's he's floating around, you know. Some transcendental consciousness. Yeah. So yeah, and Krishna he likes to reciprocate with his devotees. And this is uh, uh this is there on book distribution. Actually what what attracts the book distributors so much to this book distribution activity is that you you feel the reciprocation, isn't it? You feel the reciprocation, and it's 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 uh, it's pretty ecstatic <laughs> when you when you feel the you 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 actually as it said you go out on book distribution and you meet Krishna you feel the presence of Krishna, and it's a pretty wonderful feeling. So many book distributors have had this experience. And this is surrender, to go out and do this most important activity, which is a little rough on the false ego. <laughs> Krishna's please. So it's said, this is one of the types of surrenders. He's a, he's a very surrendered devotee. And it's stated, Anukoyasya Sankalpa. Pratikoyashivarjan, Rakshishititi Vishvashu, Goptrikte Saranamita. That the, the first part of surrender is to accept that which is favorable for devotional service. And book distribution is extremely favorable for our advancement in Krishna consciousness. Why? Because one gets very quickly recognized by Krishna. What does that mean, to be quickly recognized by Krishna? It means that Krishna, he sees, and he's pleased. Of course, he sees everything. There's nothing that Krishna doesn't see. But to please Krishna, that's another thing. <laughs> so to be recognized by Krishna means that he's seen us, and he's pleased. And this is the goal of life. If we can please Krishna, then what more is there to do? You, you, you know, we did it. We, that's the goal, is to please Krishna. And Krishna comes to do this activity, to give this knowledge out. He sends his pure devotees here to do this activity of giving this knowledge out. So we're continuing on the parampara, continuing on, giving this knowledge out. And who's going to appreciate it and who isn't? We have no idea. Krishna knows. 
Some people are appreciated. We don't know. We have not. A, we haven't a clue who's reading these books, and just like there is one devotee uh, distributing books, and uh, at a campus, college campus, and he just happened to notice that there's a lady sitting down and she's reading, and he just went over and glanced and he just wanted Prabhupada's books, and uh, he said, "Oh, you like that book?" Oh, yeah, I like this book so much. You just got it recently? No, I've had it for years. I just happened to sit down and, and read it now while she's next to a Sankirtan devotee. <laughs> and he said, well, I have, a, I have a lot more books here of the, probably the same author. And she said, really? Wow. Because I really, everything he said here is just, was that you? Is that your, your Leela? I thought it might have been yours. It was Parameshwar. But, uh, yeah, she just happened to desire, to, to, desire to, to read it right then while there's a book distributor right next to her. She's had it for years, sitting in her, in her, in her purse. And she just got inspired by Krishna. That's the mystic ability of, of Krishna. Yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, book distribution. It's actually a very, a very mystical activity. Therefore, it's uh, it's, uh, yeah, very pleasing to devotees. So to accept things favorable for devotional service, to reject things unfavorable. Like sometimes we're on book distribution, and there's pe you meet people that just want to talk. Yeah, you meet people like that sometimes. <laughs> they meet a nice person, oh, they just talk. <laughs> we got business to do. We got to get the books out to the people. So in a nice way, we tell them, you know, it'd be really nice to continue talking to you. But uh, we have to distribute a lot of books here. Of course, sometimes people are actually interested and, they, and they're asking good questions. In that case, then we spend time with them. But if people just want to you just talk about, you know, this and that, we have to, we have to in a nice way, just you know, move on to, to other people to give them this... Uh, Special mercy. Anukuyasya sankapa pratikuyasya vaj rakshishititi. We uh, a devotee that surrender accepts that Krishna, he will protect. Like there's a lot of Maya out there, too much Maya. So it's a risky thing to go out on book distribution. You have to see so much Maya. People, you know, women walk around half naked. Some it's very common. So you got to pray to Krishna for protection. And he protects. I think one of the most amazing examples of, of being protected by Krishna was this amazing example of Draupadi. She was uh, somehow, by inconceivable arrangement, she, you know, she had those five husbands and Yudas there. He, he was gambling and he gambled himself away and his brothers and kingdom and everything and even Draupadi. And then they dragged her in front of this assembly of, of men and tried to strip her naked. And she's, I mean, she's such a chaste lady, such a great devotee actually. One of her names is Krishna. Not Krishna, but Krishna. So Krishna conscious. So her husbands couldn't help her. And she was trying to, you know, Dushashan was trying to take her clothes off, take her sari off. And she, with one hand she was trying to, she thought by her strength she'll be able to, to avoid this embarrassment. But finally she just said, it's not possible. So then she lifted both hands. Hey, Govinda! And then Krishna, probably for the first time ever, he incarnated as a sari. <laughs> so Dusashan is pulling the sari. Pulling, 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 pulling. He got tired. Kshatriya. That was, must have been a lot of sari. <laughs> so Krishna protected 
And Krishna will protect us if we're sincerely trying to to give Krishna to others. So Anukriyasya Sankab Pratikyasya Rajana Rakshishiti Jivishasu Gopta Te Saranamyata that he will maintain. You know, Krishna is maintaining everyone. So he is he's maintaining the devotees. Also this interesting pastime happened with Prabhupada. He was Prabhupada was in India and he was meeting with with one of his god brothers. And Prabhupada said, So what what's new? Anything uh Anything, uh, anything new around? And, and his god brother said, you know, I just had an interesting experience. I was uh, in one city and this, this um, yogi, he was able to just manifest an apple. And I could see that he wasn't just a magician, he just manifested an apple. And Prabhupada said, oh, Interesting. So Prabhupada said, you know, I went to America with nothing. Didn't know anybody, didn't have anything. And then Krishna's mercy was preaching and people started coming and we started one temple and then we started another temple and another temple. And now, now we have about a hundred temples around the world. And at all these temples, there's so many apples. <laughs> <laughs> so his guy there said, oh yeah, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Prabhupada did so much. Yeah. And so many temples, you know, so many devotees, and they're all being maintained. Nice prasadam. So Krishna maintains. Anukriyasya sankapa pratikriyasya varjanam rakshisya titi vishwati gopdate varnamyata. And the last one, which is the most difficult, is to have humility. Most difficult. Just like in this, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that austerities of the body, austerities of the speech, and austerities of the mind. And the last one is the most difficult. Of these three austerities, there's five five in each of them, but the, the last one is the most difficult. And that last one is to be a pure soul. To be pure. The most difficult. So in this one also, the last one is karpanya. Humility. Because in Kali Yuga, people are very proud. Very proud. Even it's said, they have an English saying, that the pauper is proud of his penny. Proud of his penny. And Prabhupada, one time, he was at the Howrah station, the big big uh, train station there in Calcutta. And he saw one man, he had a, a pile of burnt wood. <laughs> And Prabhupada could see the person he was proud that he had this. Yeah. Burnt wood. <laughs> what do you do with burnt wood? <laughs> Any little thing. Someone gets a new pair of shoes and he's walking down the street and he's thinking, yes, sir. everybody's looking at me, appreciating my nice new shoes. You know? <laughs> Very easy to get proud. Yeah. So humility. Humility means that knowing that, that I'm very small. How small? One ten thousand size of a tip of a hair. I'm very small. And Krishna, he's great. He's the greatest. And we try to serve Krishna to the best of our ability. So this is humility. Humility doesn't just mean, you know, saying dandavats to everybody, you know. No, but it actually means engaging in devotional service. Engaging in service to Krishna. Just like Bhima was fighting Duryodhana for how many days? Anybody know? 
How many days was Bhima fighting with Duryodhana? 28 days. Wow. Imagine that. <laughs> and there was to come to come no end. But he was fighting so so powerfully, you know, against Duryodhana in all humility <laughs> to please Krishna. To bring Yudhisthir. Of course, eventually Krishna helped him and won the won the battle. But that's humility, doing what Krishna wants us to do. And it's interesting that Balaram didn't want him to. <laughs> Balaram and Krishna is very interesting. Because <laughs> uh, he was, Duryodhana was one of his good students. Of course, Bhima also. It's kind of interesting. So, book distribution helps us to develop this humility in a very nice way because you get a you get a lot of rejection. The false ego doesn't like rejection. But it's actually very good to to help dissolve the false ego. It's very good for the real ego, it's good. And the real ego appreciates it. What is the real ego? Then I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. As a servant of Krishna, we appreciate it to be rejected. Of course, we also like to distribute books. <laughs> but more than, of course, uh, uh, with this Mahotsa, Mahotsaha? Mahotsaha. Mahotsaha. <laughs> Mahotsaha. He probably gets more yeses than noes. <laughs> but for most devotees, you get more noes than yeses. <laughs> He's an exception. <laughs> I mean, he must be chanting real good rounds. Is he good sadhana? Yeah, he's good sadhana. He's a unique person. <laughs> so, yeah, we have to have very good sadhana. This gives us strength to to be strong on sankirtan. You know, and to have the the purity. Purity is the force. Purity is the force. This is what uh, encourages people to take. They see the desire, the pure desire of the devotee. So book distribution isn't so much about what we say, but it's how we pray. Actually, it's common saying. I, didn't, you may, I, I heard that, uh, what's his name, had said this also. Uh, no. Uh, no. Amogalila. But I was just, Amogalila said that to Brigapati while he was up there. But then I was, I was reading the book that I just wrote. I'm doing the proofreading of it. And it's there in the book also. I, I mentioned that in the book also. It's pretty, it's not how you, or what you say, but it's how you pray. I don't know what, who came up with it, but it's been around. I read it somewhere else. It's been around for a while. So <laughs> the origin of it, only Krishna knows. <laughs> huh? <laughs> that Krishna is the origin of everything. Right? <laughs> so, uh, actually, the way Prabhupada prayed, of course, is the best. So I'm going to read that. This is uh, Markane Bhagavat Dharma. This is how to, there's a devotee in uh, in Australia. No, excuse me, in Russia, Ambrish Maharaj, and he. Whenever he goes on book to it, he reads this first before he starts. This is the mood, Babu's. How to pray. He's a Swami now, Ambarish Maharaj. And he's got a he's got more of a name, but I'm just some <laughs> He's a sannyasi. Yeah, yeah. He started distributing books in nineteen ninety. As soon as the as the communist Russia stopped, he was there distributing books. And people were lined up to take books. Imagine how nice that would be, huh? People lined up. He's still distributing books, oh yeah. 31 years now. So <laughs> imagine how easy that would be, yeah? Huh? It wouldn't be hard on the false ego there, you know, just people lined up taking books. Yeah? <laughs> okay, here we go. My dear Lord Krishna, you are so kind upon this useless soul, but I do not know why you have brought me here. Now you can do whatever you like with me. 
But I guess you have some business here. Otherwise, why would you bring me to this terrible place? Now, millions of Indians try to come to America and do come to America because it's not you know, such a terrible place. It's, you know, it's kind of heavenly compared to a lot of places, compared to India, you know, in, in some villages, right? But Prabhupada says, such a terrible place. Why was he, did he say that? So much sinful activity. They're all, I mean, he brought, he brought what he brought, some, uh, some dry fruit, and just in case there's nothing to eat, because everybody eats meat here. He was concerned about <laughs> maybe if there's nothing to eat here. <laughs> Meat eaters and drunkards and illicit sex, so sinful. Terrible place. Of course, that's what it is. Of course, Prabhupada changed it some. Changed some terrible people into Vaishnavas. What was it? Crows. He turned crows into swans. And it's still happening by this book distribution. Most of the people here are covered by the material modes of ignorance and passion. Absorbed in material life, they think themselves very happy and satisfied, and therefore they have no taste for the transcendental message of Vasudev. I do not know how they will be able to understand it, but I know your causeless mercy can make everything possible because you are the most expert mystic. Prabhupada's bringing that up again. He's, a, he's a, the best mystic. How will they understand the mellows of devotional service, O Lord? I am simply praying for your mercy so that I will be able to convince them about your message. All living entities have become under the control of the illusory energy by your will, and therefore, if you like, by your will, they can also be released from the clutches of illusion. This is so deep, Prophet. <laughs> I wish that you may deliver them. And this is why it's spread all over the, the world, because of that desire of Prabhupada. I wish that you may deliver them. Therefore, if you so desire their deliverance, then only will they be able to understand your message? The words of the Srimad Bhagavatam are your incarnation. And if a sober person repeatedly receives them with submissive oral reception, then he will be able, he will be able to understand your message. They will become liberated from the influence of the modes of ignorance and passion, and thus all inauspicious things accumulated in the core of the heart will disappear. How will I make them understand this message of Krishna consciousness? I am very unfortunate. See, the humility. Unfortunate, unqualified, and the most fallen. You see, this is what... This is what did it. He's praying to Krishna that they be delivered and his deep humility is coming out here. Unfortunate, unqualified, and the most fallen. I mean, Prabhupada is complete opposite of all these things. But he's got that humility. Therefore, I am seeking, I am seeking your benediction so that I can convince them. For I am powerless to do so on my own. Somehow or other, O oh Lord, you have brought me here to speak about you. Now, my Lord, it is up to you to make me a success or failure as you like. Sweet, huh? O oh, spiritual master of all the worlds, I can simply repeat your message. So if you like, you can make my power of speaking suitable for their understanding. Only by your causeless mercy will my words become pure. I am sure that when this transcendental message penetrates their hearts, they will certainly feel ungladdened and thus become liberated from all unhappy conditions of life. O oh Lord, I am just like a puppet 
in your hands. So if you, if you have brought me here to dance, then make me dance, make me dance, O oh Lord, make me dance as you like. Wow. I have no devotion. Again, here's the humility. Nor do I have any knowledge. But I have strong faith in the holy name of Krishna. I have been designated as Bhakti Vedanta. And now, if you like, you can fulfill the real purport of Bhakti Vedanta. Srila Prabhupada ki? Yeah. So, this is why this movement spread so much. The purity, the humility, you know, the, the knowledge, the desire to save these fallen souls. So I have uh, something that just came to me recently by a devotee from Russia. This is hot off the press. This is a nice story. Oops, sorry. <laughs> this is a nice story that happened some time back. I was with a group of three other devotees and came to an ancient Russian city of Suzdal to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. This is a very old city, long before Moscow even, and it's very religious. It was a bold decision to go to a place where almost every second resident is a nun or a priest. And almost every corner has a church or a temple. On the first day, inspired by the morning program, I was walking around this exotic little town for about nine hours and offering books everywhere to everyone, but was unsuccessful. All the residents refused as, they con as, they, as if they had conspired against me. Everyone had almost th had, had the same answer. No, 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 this is not my belief. It seemed to me Necessary to make some sense of our visit. What did this mean according to God's plan? I thought that I should return to the hotel and find out the other devotees' results. If they were the same as mine, then maybe we should just leave immediately. Going to the hotel, I passed churches where I was unafraid to go with the books, but I couldn't even imagine how I would offer them there. Yet I decided strictly, quote, Krishna, just for your sake, I will go to this church now and offer books to the first person who catches my eye. And if you will be done, if your will will be done, then please help me distribute at least one book. <laughs> the church premises were all taken care of. Suddenly I spotted an almost unnoticeable sign above a small door. Church bench. This was a door leading to a downstairs area that turned out to be a basement. I carefully went down the steps and quietly opened the door and saw a frightened elderly monk with a big beard. When he saw me, he hid something under the table with a quick motion. I pretended that I didn't notice. I politely introduced myself. Hello. We came from Arkhangelsk. <laughs> That's probably the improper pronunciation, but <laughs> and brought some very valuable books about God. As a believer, you might be interested in this. Can I find out your name? Good evening. My name is Father Gabriel. Father Gabriel, it is clear from your eyes that you are wise. Please Look at our books. I noticed a strong excitement and confusion in his eyes, which quickly changed to joy and revitalization. He looked at me with love and said loudly, quote, I'm so glad. How lucky I am. God finally answered my prayers. I've been looking for these books for several years. I prayed to Jesus, to the Mother of God, 
to my guardian angel and even to Krishna to send me these books. <laughs> he suddenly pulled out from under the table Srimad Bhagavatam's second canto, the object he hid when I walked in. He said, when you came in, I was reading this book, which I do every day for a few hours, and I sit in, ob in obedience. I got this book from my late father. He bought it in Moscow. Being a Christian, he repeated your Hare Krishna mantra every day, along with the Jesus prayer. Before he died, he pushed me to read the Srimad Bhagavatam, despite my former negative attitude towards this book. And now, this is my most dear and valuable book. Without it, I don't see any meaning of living. I read this book every free minute. <laughs> it opened my eyes to a true idea of myself and of God. And after I read it, after I read it seven times in a row, I began to pray that God graciously send me the rest of the books of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And now a miracle has happened. You brought them to me. Please tell me the price and let me buy all the books you have. That was a pleasant surprise. Huh? It's not over yet. I listened to him and was surprised at how the Lord arranged everything in such a perfect way. I also began to express my feelings to him by telling him, how I walked around Suzdal, that's the name of this city, the whole day and finally asked God to send me at least one sincere person who would need these books. We were both in ecstasy. I named the price and Father Gabriel immediately got the right amount. He bought all the Bhagavatam cantos. I had 13. We talked more about his spiritual journey and his humble attempts to do japa meditation. I gave him some practical advice and told him how to make homemade beads. Thanks to this meeting, I always remember and try not to forget one important truth. If you sincerely pray to God, he hears and fulfills the desires of his servants. Thank you, Krishna. This is your glory, wisdom, and greatness. Bhakta Kontaktek. <laughs> Bhakta Kontakte. He's a Bhakta, yeah. Pretty amazing, huh? Well, actually, uh, it says it says exactly twenty years ago. Some time back. And I have another uh, interesting story that, that happened. Jana Nivas, you know, our local Jana Nivas was telling me that he was distributing books in South America. And he approached this lady who she said, I'm not very interested, I'm more into science. And he said, well, this is the science of self-realization. And she said, no, I'm not so much into religion and sentiment and all this. Yeah. So then she asked him, so what is this you're doing? Is this some type of uh, a sacrifice you're doing? <clears throat> and he said, well, yeah, it's a sacrifice. And, and she said, well, what's, what's, what's the result of, your, of this sacrifice? And he said, well, one result is that if you, if you please God, then, then rain comes. He said, rain? It hasn't rained here for six months. And look at the sky. There's not a cloud in the sky. And you think by doing this sacrifice you're doing, there's going to be rain? I mean, come on. You're just, you people, you're just sentimental, you know. So then they, they preached a little bit more. And, and then he went on to shipping books. And after a couple hours, he, he started feeling some rain. <laughs> it started raining. And that night it poured down rain. And it poured down rain for three days. <laughs> and then somehow she was able to see this devotee, Johnny Nivas. And she came running to him. She said, I'm so happy to see you. It rained. 
<laughs> it wasn't supposed to rain. It rained for three days. Give me more books. Give me whatever books you want. You have. Give me that. I'm gonna. I'll buy all whatever books you have that I don't have already. I'll, I'll buy it. So she bought the books. She became a devotee. <laughs> I gotta put. It, I guess I gotta start another book. You know. <laughs> Before this one's even out, I gotta start another. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just sent it out. You're not on the web. You got a website. You get the stories, right? You you get my stories, right? And you, yeah, the emails. If anybody wants to get the stories I send out, you can give me your email sometime. I have another interesting one, just a few more. This devotee is leaving Los Angeles. He's going to Canada. He distributes books in Toronto. He's, he's on the plane. He's reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And he's loving it. He's just sitting there, just reading it for hours. And this lady's sitting next to him. And she goes to sleep, and she wakes up, and he's still reading. And she glances over, and she sees this in Sanskrit. She had spent some time in India, so she saw the Sanskrit. And she said, excuse me, is that the, the Mahabharata you're reading? I said, no, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. This is called the, the Amala Purana. So we started preaching to her about the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, he, was, he was so enlivened. And, you know, she had already she had been to India. She's into the, you know, the Vedic culture. And so he was preaching to her about the Srimad Bhagavatam. And she said, well, can you, can you send me one? <laughs> he said, well, yeah, sure. She lived in Canada also, I think, or either Canada or California. But I, I made the arrangement. I, I, I sent the Srimad Bhagavatam to her. He, he gave me, sent me the address. I sent it to her. She sent the money to him. It's the first time in history that a Srimad Bhagavatam, that we know of, that a Srimad Bhagavatam was sold on the plane. <laughs> and then she wrote, she, she sent the money, and she got the books and wrote a nice letter to him. Thank you so much for the books. I'm loving the books. It's amazing. Huh? Whole set. Whole Srimad Bhagavatam set. On the plane. Of course, she didn't get it there, but she got it eventually. It's like unbelievable. So, where there's a will, there's a way. We just have to, huh? Yeah, she was impressed that he was sitting there reading and reading and reading. And then she glanced over, oh, this is a spiritual text, you know. And then the conversation, and then the book was distributed. So, on that note, any questions? Or comments? Yes. I don't have questions, but I have stories. You inspired me. As you're saying all these things, I'm remembering a few stories that I've experienced on this past trip. I wish you would send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big problem. The book distributors don't send me the stories. You know? um, I have three stories. How many should I tell? Well, let's see how long they go. Go, th go okay. for the first one. Take the mask off. Okay. <laughs> wow, thank you, Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was in uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, I decided I wanted to go to the Sunday program. Uh, Salt Lake City was crazy. My van, like, broke down, so I was, like, stuck there. I was staying in a devotee's place. So I went to the temple for the Sunday program, and... Uh, yeah, you know, I wanted to do some preaching. I wanted to like see if I could meet some people and you know preach to them and try to inspire them in any way. So I went there and I saw it's like a middle-aged couple, a guy with a beard and a younger girl. And so I was like, I'm going to speak with them. But I showed there kind of late. So after the program got over, I was I sat down with them when they were taking prasadam, and I just asked him. I was like, So where are you from? And he said, I'm from Cody, Wyoming. <laughs> I said, Well, where's that? <laughs> and he said, Oh, it's like a little little town, a small town on the outskirts of Yellowstone. It's known for uh, Buffalo Bill, the, you know, the cowboy guy. I said, all right, well, what do you do professionally? He said, well, I'm a, I'm a cattle brander. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a cattle brander. That's what the town's known for. And I said, well, do you like to read? He said, yeah, I love to read. And he's in the middle of eating his sweet rice. And I said, well, we got a bunch of books. He's like, let's go look at them. And he just jumped up in the middle of his prasadam. 
<laughs> and drops his sweet rice. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> finish what you're eating, you know. And well, they, the books aren't going anywhere. They're, you know, they're not going to go bad or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so brought him to the bookstore and I, uh, I showed him the Srimad Bhagavatam set. It was him and his daughter, actually. And uh, they, they had come to the temple, not to come to the temple. They came to the temple looking for a restaurant to go to. And they just happened to show up during the Saturday program. And a devotee convinced them just to stay. And they'd be, there'd be prasadam served at the end and it'd be free. So somehow they convinced to stay. So showed them the Srimad Bhagavatam set. They took the whole Srimad Bhagavatam set. Hari Bo. And then they brought it back to, I, pu- I carried it to their car and put it in their car. And it was brought back to Cody, Wyoming. A cow brander. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that... So it did, yeah. So that day actually was the disappearance day of Raghunath Bhattaka Swami. And it was a codice. And I was reading about Raghunath Bhattaka Swami that day. And Raghunath Bhattaka Swami, what he was known for is reading Bhagavatam and speaking Bhagavatam. He didn't write any books. He just spoke Bhagavatam in Vrindavan. Mm-hmm. And so I felt it was, you know, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami's mercy on this couple that they were able, or the father and daughter, that they were able to take the Bhagavatam set. Wow. Okay. Two. One more? Two? Two more. Okay. Two more. All right. <laughs> it's the marathon. You've got to get the mood, you know, the book distribution <laughs> mood. So uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Sacramento, California. I was distributing books in the Walmart parking lot there, and it was really, really tough. Within fir- the first five minutes, the security guard rolled up on me and he says, so, so you sell the books? I said, no, I'm just giving them away, you know. He had a, <laughs> you know, so he said, uh, he said, well, if you're giving them away, then you can stay. I said, really? He said, yeah, I'm a Buddhist. He's like, I'm all into this. He's like, these, he's like, these people need this. Believe me, I'm here every day. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I just kept distributing, you know, 10, 20 minutes go by and then, he drives up. He's like, so how's it going? And I said, well, you know, actually, no one's taking any books. And he's like, you see the Starbucks over there? It's in the same parking lot. And I said, yeah. He's like, go over there. And so I was like, all right. Can't, I, mean, I have nothing to lose. <laughs> so I go over to the Starbucks parking lot. The first person I speak with is like this soccer mom. And she like loses her mind when she sees the books and gives me $100. <laughs> Good instruction by that Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the final story is uh, I was at University of Nevada, Reno. We had this huge day, myself and my god brother, and also Damodar Kumar Prabhu. And uh, we were distributing. And this boy just came, walks up to me. He said, I had a dream about two nights ago. And I was told that this is going to be my last birth in the material world. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh yeah? And he said, yeah, but I don't know what that means and I feel like I'm supposed to help other people do the same. Can you help me? <laughs> I said, well, yeah, I mean, ch- check out these books. And so we started speaking and he asked me some really good questions and he was very attentive. And then um, somehow in the course of our exchange and all the people that were coming to our table, you know, he got the books, gave a nice donation, but I wasn't able to get his, his contact information just in the course of our exchange. So the next day, my god brother, Kulta Karnava, he was, stri- I had to go deal with something with the van, so I wasn't able to go out, but he was distributing at a different spot. And somehow the same guy came up to him and he was like, hey, you know, I just wanted to say I really appreciated meeting you guys. And Kulta Karnav was like, oh yeah, well, you know, here, take, he, he said, he said he wanted to give him my number so he didn't have to talk with him as long as I did the day before. <laughs> so he gave him my phone number. He's like, well, if you have any questions, you can contact David Vrata. About a week later, two weeks later, I get a message from him and he said, hello, David Vrata, this is the one, this is the person that you met who said that had a dream and that you may have some answers. I have now finished the science of self-realization in the Bhagavad Gita, and I am now at war with the Maya. I feel as if I'm being called for sannyas, and I'm seeking for a bona fide spiritual master. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> and so, Fired up. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we did a few reading calls, and we started reading teachings of Lord Chaitanya together, and I said, you know, my spiritual master is, uh, is going to be in town this weekend if you want to, you know, come out. 
you can you know kind of see what a spiritual master is like and you know get see it see what a temple is like and just experience environment so he came out and uh he drove five hours from reno for one class he was only he was only there for less than 12 hours he drove out five hours from reno and attended my spiritual master's class and then he bought a Srimad bhagavatam set he's currently reading the krishna book and he's chanting and I'm in constant contact with him. And yeah, he's, he's, now he's messaging me. And he says, how can we spread Krishna consciousness in Reno? <laughs> Got to start a temple there. <laughs> How do you go? You remind me of one story also with uh, Falgun. Some of you may remember Falgun Prabhu. He was a student book. It was, it was called a, uh, The Blowout. You know, they have these concerts. At the end of the concert, they call it blowout. Everybody leaves. It's a big rush, you know, just passionate. So he tries to focus on one person because there's just tons of people coming, you know. Just. So he focused on one person. The person stopped in front of him, and the person said, I had a dream about you. You were a monk, and you told me to stop drinking and smoking. And Fagun said, well, I'm a monk, and I'm telling you, Stop smoking and stop drinking. <laughs> Take this book and give a donation. <laughs> the, guy, the guy was shocked. You know? <laughs> give a nice donation and took a book. <laughs> Amazing things happening out there. Sheila Bravo Pod Key. Transcendental Book Distribution Key.